Hi guys, how are you all doing? Um, got a build for you now. Uh, pretty lovely build to be honest. Uh, there are a few, <laughs> few <laughs> swear inducing moments with the build, but um, I'll cover those as I go through it. It's not a weekend build. It's a fairly lengthy build. It's um, it's taken me four days, pretty much not working on anything else. And uh, yeah, it's um, it's 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 very very nice. Um, it's basically 16, 16 steps. Uh, I've done this in fifth, well, including this one, the 16 video shots. Um, so I'll take you through the build now. There's no painting involved. This is just literally the build from start to finish. So there's no part one, part two, part three. At the end of this video, you will see this model finished other than paint. And there's some cabling that has to be added that I'm going to leave till after it's painted, the cable that lifts the um, uprights. So uh, sit back, enjoy it, get yourself some popcorn or a cup of Coke or a can of beer or something and uh, enjoy. Um, and if you like what you see, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button down there and the notifications bell. And um, yeah, and I also want to say thank you to all you guys this year alone, what is it now? January the 20th, 2019. And this year, my subscriber count has doubled on over, it's over 880 at the moment. So, you know, it, maybe it'll be a thousand before the end of January. That'll be wonderful. Okay, guys. So thanks very much for all your, uh, all your interest and comments and everything. But anyway, let's get on with this build. Hope you enjoy it. Right. So uh, here we go then. This is, um, this is part one. Or stage one, should I say. And this is the fries, as I said, 16 tons travel crown, which is road gantry crane. Road gantry crane. So um, I'll do this page by page and then put a little snippet of the video as, as I go by page by page. And the objective is to get it all done in one video. So um, I've gone straight to section four, which I shouldn't have done. I should have gone to section one because that's where we start, isn't it? Right, section one. Um, so here we've got the the two main. These are the two main gantries across the top. This is this part here, um, and yeah, a couple of issues with them. Um, that's the bottom one. This is the this is the the top one here. Uh, you've got these pieces that glue onto here. That's D three and D two, as you can see. Um, and the you can see it goes in on pins at the back and unfortunately a bit, bit of a faux pas from Tacon really uh, this is the inside face of that beam and um, what they've done they've got ejector pin marks all over the back face so this is the face that you see from outside so um, you can probably pick out there where I've actually cleaned some and gone over with the glue and stuff uh, I mean it's going to be slightly weathered and, and streaked and rusty anyway so I haven't gone to town and you know make, been too fussy with removing them but um you can see it's all covered in dust as well um but yeah unfortunately they did that they could have put the injector pin marks on this side and then it wouldn't have been so much a problem and also on the inside of this face is is covered in injector pin marks as well you probably see the witnesses of them there when I've sanded them off but um as I say it's the inside face I'm not really overly bothered with it and you've got these tiny little pieces that go on the bottom and then this one here same sort of thing still got the same ejector pin marks on the outside face um, difference here we've got these lugs which go on and if you can see end on it's a little bit confusing on the instructions the back face of these is angled it does actually go like that you can see that here when you look at the back of the instructions as an end on plan and you can see that those those lugs are actually tapered in. They, they don't need to be straight. Uh, so so that's um, that's that side. Then you've got these bits that go on the back that produce the um, the I beams. So there's there's nine of those on each of them. So they give you the uh, the I beam section down the back as you can see there. Um, so that's those bits. And then you're adding these few bits of um, gear and stuff there's a wheel there that must turn you can see there um, and you've got these blocks here some massive um, sprue gates on these absolutely huge quite hard plastic so when you cut them off be more careful than I was you can see I've left evidence of a sprue gate there um, so yeah focus 
Uh, so yeah, be a little bit careful what you need to do. There's some here, what I did was cut further away from the plastic and then sanded it back. And that was even with my Tamiya and nippers. Maybe they're getting a bit blunt, I don't know. Uh, so there's that bit done. Um, and then coming down here, we've got this, this lower section of section two. This little gear assembly here is a bit strange. Um, you've got this shaft, which goes into this gear here. And there's like a counter bore in there. And then you glue this into a hole through. So you're gluing that to that through that gear, which is a bit weird. And of course, you need to make sure so it stays running true. So um, what I did, I, I, I put this up in a pin chuck on the end. And then I was able to twist it and turn it and make sure that everything was all running nice and true. Um, these aren't slide molded. They're normal molded parts. So there's quite a bit of clean up with seams and stuff on them. To make sure the pulleys are actually pulleys and they haven't got a great flange in the middle of them then you've got this part here which is called b um you've got this part in the middle of the the wire is going to go around and you've got this spiral here which the um which the cable goes around um obviously i won't make too much fuss of that scene because it's going to be covered in cable um here there's a couple of ejector pin marks but luckily they're on the inside face so they're not going to get seen and then as I showed you in my review, if you look back at my review, you'll see that most of the parts in this kit, they've actually got the sprue connection points. Instead of being on the on the edge of the part here, they're actually on the front face. And here's a perfect example. This part here, you can see it's got this face has got these um these raised these raised sort of wedge parts here. So it has to go on that way round and face out. And they've got the bloody sprue connection points on the outside face. So rather than have them on the edge, they've got them actually on this face. And that's the exposed face that you need to clean up. They should have put them on the inside face where it's going to be covered in rope. And then again, the same on this gear. You've got that. Now this, could have, this gear could have gone on either way. But I've chosen to put it this way because you kind of get this... Um, it's obviously the one face of the mould is flat and you get this sort of edge that I want to clean up. You can see there where I've put Tammy extra thin around the edge to sort of break down that sharp edge. You kind of end up with, when you look at it this side, it's almost like a disc. And you can't quite see the teeth. Um, so uh, so there, there's, um, that's page, we'll call it page one. That's the first page. And then now what I'm going to do is get on and do all this bit and get these beams together. So once I finish this page, I'll come back and show you where we are. Well, I'm just going to jump in here with um, with some advice before um, bef before we get any more done on this. Um, I'm not an expert by any any stretch of the imagination. I'm just a, an old guy with a lot of experience, and I'm an engineer, I suppose. So I sort of see how things go together. But um, I want to offer a little bit of advice to anybody who hasn't built this kit um, on really probably the best way to go about it. As you can see here, we've got this part here, E44 which is a bit close to the camera oops flashing lights uh, we've got e44 here which um, is a gear that has to be pinched between this block here and the side so it's basically going in there so that's going to be floating and you've also got this little gear here e45 which is being pinched between this bracket e30 and the uh, and the side wall here so I looked at this and thought about, well, probably the best way to go about it is to glue that bracket onto there. Then offer that up, pinch that gear in between, glue that to this side, let that go off. And then this one here, offer this one up to the, this part here up to the side, pinch that gear in between, put some glue down there, let that go off, make sure it's all square and everything. And um, that's what I've done. So just to show, actually prove that it works. Here's the, this is, this is the front part here, as we're looking at these instructions, this is the front. So you can see that what I've done is, um, is put that in with that gear in there in between. You can see that gear in, in there. That's free to turn, making sure this is all square and everything. And then on the other end, we've got like this one here, it's that way around in the instructions. And you can see that we've got that gear pinched in there pinched between the two so um i think that's the way to go and then you can basically put all the other gears in there and then assemble this up like that so 
I'll come back to you in a minute when I've got that done. Right, so that's that that section done now. Um, it's quite uh, it's quite flimsy, quite flexible. Uh, what I can tell you is, um, in, in, after my experience of building it, you can actually glue the ends together and just glue these literally the the um, the four sides to the ends. Don't add these bottom pieces yet. Once they're in and sort of gone off, then you can sort of lever it apart and get these these pulleys in that you need to get in and then um, and then pull it all together and glue these these bottom pieces on here that will keep everything all square and then what I did was just put it on the bench with a bit of weight on top and let it go off with it to, so to make, get it nice and square and flat um, these gears go these wheels all turn um, but you have got engagement in here uh, I don't know if the camera is going to pick it up but you can see down in there there's a gear on that side and then on this side there's a there's another gear there so um yeah that's all got to turn freely and everything i guess for the for the cables to work i'm going through the instructions it looks like this thing might be a working model um i was saying that when you go into the next step we start looking at this um carriage and stuff that goes across um they're not telling you not to glue any of that so this is the bit that actually goes across with your block and tackle hanging off and they're not saying to not glue any of it so you've got all these working pulleys and gears and everything all turning but then what actually attaches to them doesn't turn so I, I, I don't know so um I'll get on with this section now and then once this bit is done I'll come back Got there finally in the end um so that's this page all done now uh, and you can see here we've got the um the actual main hook which is very nice you've got the the wheels which turn on the ends here um nice little assembly you've got the swiveling hook as well which is all very nice um here i've got the actual main upper girder frame if you like uh, i haven't fitted the chain to one end because i see no need at the moment this one had to be fitted because it goes up inside this box um and basically it had to, had to go on so what i've done is just taped it up to to, to keep it you know sort of out of the way these chains here, um, this is this 437 millimeter chain, which goes at either end of this cart and basically goes around these um, pulley gears at the end. Uh, if you've got family um, or somebody, somebody who's sensitive to swearing and you're building this kit, make sure they're not around when you do that. Um, I got into all sorts of shapes and God knows what with it. It is an absolute nightmare because the you, you glue the chain to one end onto this tiny, if you can get in there and see it, there's a tiny, tiny little hook in there. So you glue it on there and then you loop it round and you loop it underneath and, and it keeps getting caught around everything. And then you loop it back up around the other side, up around the top and you're working with it. And of course, because it's metal, um, it's heavier than, than the plastic. So it will always try and pull this cart along that way if you're working on, on this end. And then when you actually let it go, it will actually um, it will actually just <laughs> go back on itself. So it is incredible. And also you notice I've got quite a bit of sag in the chain. You can see it swinging on the bottom now. I can't sort of hold it in front of the phone with, with the sag downwards. But um, believe it or not, if I go one more link, just one more link, it becomes quite taut. And I'm kind of aware of two things. The chain wouldn't have been that taut in real life. And also, if it's too taut, it's going to break off these these tiny little hooks that it's, um, that it's fixed to. Because there's nothing else holding it on there. So um, I've gone for that. So it's got a bit of sag. Um, it's not something I'm going to be playing with anyway. But um, yeah, but I just kept it moving. It'd be, it'd be making it a lot easier to paint. That's That's the main thing. And also I can kind of lift this up and paint under the wheels and stuff. So, uh, yeah, one thing I am worried about, or not worried about really, is concerned about is how I'm going to paint these chains. Because once you spray the whole thing Dunkel Gelb, then you need to get the chains to a different colour. So, we'll worry about that when we come to it. I'll paint it after it's all built. So, there we go, guys. That's, um, that's step four, which is on page five. So, now we're going to move on to... Oh, I didn't show you the, um, the end. The, the end detail is very nice with that motor. And um, I'll use some brass handles because the plastic parts... We're quite brittle. Um, there's a handle on the other end somewhere. Another oh, no, is next to the other one. So you've got two brass handles there. 
and then you've got this pulley mechanism on the ends, you've got these gears that still go around. And now the cables have to go in now. Um, as you can see here, it's telling you 1500 mil, so I've got to tie those through and then glue this main girder on the top. And I think that is that. Yeah, we're onto the uh, supports then. So I'm going to get that done and I'll be back with you in a minute. Hey guys, this is, uh, I think this is part four or five of this segment. Um, I know this seems to be going by very quickly, but I can assure you this is actually day three of this build. Um, it is pretty intense. And I just thought I'd clip, slip this in here. Uh, masking tape is your friend. Uh, the, the problem with this model is, is the way you have to go about building it. And I can really see no other way that makes it less fiddly. You can't really add all this upper structure until you've got all this in because it will just be in the way. So as a result, you've got this, you know, extremely flexible side. So what happens is this spindle in here with the chains on, this one here pops out from time to time, which is fun. And then the actual cart in the middle that falls through from time to time. So hang on a minute, let's just get some masking tape in this. So I can tell you here that masking tape is your friend. Um, you can see I've also got the rope on now or the cable on the, on the main spool. What I did with this, um, so I've never tried before. I uh, thought I'd give it a go. I have a bottle of Windsor & Newton Indian ink. Here it is here. And I left that in for about half an hour to soak. Took it out and left it overnight on a cloth. And what it's resulted in, I think is a pretty, because it starts off as a white nylon cable. I think it looks pretty authentic. Kind of looks um, almost steel-like. I mean, obviously it's going to get paint all over it, so it's going to have to be... Um, gone over again but um, I quite like the way it looks uh, to be honest so I've got that on there I've got basically the whole it's uh, 1500 millimeters you can see here so basically I've threaded that on there now um, I've got the the hook is in my little voice remember I said I put some lead shot on there. I've just put Mr. Servicer on the outside of it to cover up the lead shot so that's um, drying now so once that dry, I can get that finished off and um, then we can move on to the next part. Right then, this is the, uh, this is how we um, spool up the, the crane and everything. And we can see here, see here that I've done that. Uh, I've got a close peg hanging on it. There's no way I can get enough weight to keep the, the cables, or should I say string, taut. Um, one of the biggest issues with this is the cables or strings should I say going down the side of the pulley wheels here um, that just causes everything to lock up and what I've done I've actually put this end in a vise held this end in my hand and then actually managed to using the wheel here go up and down with the cables and then that will give you the the, uh, <clears throat> the movement you need um, I think trying to make this a working model will be extremely difficult um it, it's after all it is all plastic and there's no real metal pivots or anything and everything just w wants to keep coming off the pulleys i'm thinking when i've got some weight on here it's probably a lot better but um yeah in fact let's try that now what i'll do is i'll get this little vice and i'll hook it on this clothes peg and we'll see what happens this little citadel vice is, is absolutely great for doing small jobs on the bench so I can pick that up like that now. There we go. You can see that it's actually pulling the weight down. And I can winch it up. But one of the problems is, you see this this put, this cable's gone slack. Probably because this one's jammed. Yeah, this, this wheel here has got the cable jammed. So it can't rotate freely on the pulley. So now, it's there we go. It's, it's freed off now. So if I just put this one back up on the pulley here, like that, so now you can see that I can lower it and raise it. As you can see the, the cables working there, but there's too much weight there to overcome the ratchet on here. So, um, so there we go. Um, as I said earlier with the chains, don't do this if you've got children in the house. Um, I have probably said, doing this, I've probably said, oh, come on, you piece of um, little bad thing, horrible piece of plastic, quite a few times. 
<laughs> so there we go. So I'll uh, I'll see you in a minute and we'll get on with the rest. So get this top piece on. Just a quick builder's tip. Um, just wound the grain up. And if you actually wind the hook right up into the bottom like this, I don't know if it's up against that tape or what, but I wound that up like that out of the way. Um, and it's just staying there now with all the cables taut, not coming off the spools or anything. So, um, yeah, if you do that, just wind it up and it'll stay there. Okay. Right, so now we've got the uh, upper gantry all done. Now we're going to move on to the, um, the actual uprights. And these include the, the basically the, the chassis part that the... The wheels go on to for its transportation so we start off with the um the actual upright frames themselves and these are these are these here which unfold um so i've done two of those it says to make four of these each side which are the sides so i've done that i've made four of each of those and they've all got the pulley on that that, that goes around uh, and then it's saying then here make two and it's telling you to make four of these which are these uh, ladder upright supports with the um, you know with the uh, little brackets and stuff on but then it tells you to make two of these I think that's a typo I think it should say make four but just in case um, I can't see anything in the instructions that tells you to do anything different but just in case I'm gonna not make the other two until I need them um, I think it's a pair because they kind of go together like this you've got the holes at the bottom it's almost like scaffolding locking together there so um, I think this is actually going to be workable um, I, I don't think you'd be able to play with it but I think you'd be able to choose what position you have it in so that's going to sort of sit like that and then there's another frame on the top with the, um, the actual support um, so you've got this series of pulleys and gears that pulls everything up You've got here's on the and here you've got the gears you get an option to put a cover over these there which i haven't used so there's those gears there and they do um the trouble is the, the, the they do turn but the problem the problem with it is it's the you've got to overcome the friction and there's a lot of friction on the shafts and the gears and and because it's all plastic you sort of i'm worried i'm going to snap something so um they're going to have to sort of the I don't know they, they do turn they, they do actually move but um try, just trying to there you go you can see that moving there now but it, it's very difficult to turn because you can't get a grip on it and then you know you've got the the, the, the mechanical advantage and disadvantage let's say there's so much friction there so um yeah I don't want to snap anything this is where I'm coming off you saw my review of this kit um talking about stupid bloody sprue location points you can see on these on these covers here um you know the sprue location is on the front of the part they could have put it on the back where it's not seen but they had to put it on the front and on these here i'll show you on the sprue um you can see on the back here's this this is the back of the part with all the, the z pins on it and then the actual sprue connector runs over onto the front face you know it, it could have just been onto the edge or onto the back face. I mean, there's an angle there, but that's that's a gluing face. So I don't know. It's a bit crazy, really. Um, and then you've got those uh, those other parts. Where are they? Here, yeah, these are those parts I just showed you. You can see the sprue connection on them it goes onto the front face when it could have easily gone onto the back. It's um it's crazy. They've done it here as well. Look on this top piece. You know, it could have gone onto the back on the angle, but no, it goes onto the front. I don't know why they do this. They they tag them seem to do this a lot. Um, obviously, one of their designers is looking at things last backwards. And just for an extra bit of weight on the hook, I've drilled it out roughly and put some lead shot in there. Um, one of the biggest problems with stuff like this or cargo trucks and stuff is getting the the hook to hang down like it's got any weight in it. Generally, you probably know what I mean. The strings all you know wrinkled. It doesn't go straight down. So going to give that a go um, if that's not enough weight I'm going to have to consider I think boring down through the top adding some weight in there um, <clears throat> but basically I want this to stand without any you know without anything hanging on it I want it to be straight so uh, yeah it'd be interesting to see how that goes um, so I can't really do much more at the moment because I'm waiting for Mr. Servicer to dry the, the seam there the sprue connector points all along here 
so um on these two so i've got to wait for them to dry before i can rub them down and get rid of that seam and then they actually go in the bottom of there and that's where the axle goes so obviously it's like that for i assume it's like that for towing and like that when it's actually in use so um yeah so there we go so i'll get this section finished off and then we're looking at actually assembling it all together and adding on the uh the upper support piece and this is the axle down here so well, as i say i'm sure that's just a typo i could go on and make four but um let's, let's just not jump the gun right so there we go that's them all done i did decide to go on and build these four um they're quite a nice little assembly really uh, they go together. This is the the pivot, and then they, as I showed you in the last video, they they were in the last snippet. They actually um, go together to make um, to make two halves. There we go, or, or one one pair, and then some else will go on here to to interlock them together. So that's uh, them done. They've got the little pulley wheels on them, all going round. So I've done those four. These are done here uh, with the swivels on the bottom. I didn't bother putting this piece on the inside. That way you could just, it's quite a tight fit anyway, but it comes apart easily for painting. Um, then as I say, you, you do need on these parts here, there's a pretty nasty seam down the middle. So that needs some filling as you can see. Um, and then also around the edges here, I thought I'd put some filling with blister servicer in there just to, just to clean up the gaps. I've also had somebody commenting last night. Well, today is um, what is it today? It's uh, Saturday, Saturday the nineteenth um, of January. So uh, yeah, somebody was commenting about in my uh, review of this kit, you know, about the surface mounted sprue nibs and everything, and um, I think basically insinuating that I don't know what I'm talking about. It sounds like, but uh, this is what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, this guy was commenting about how it's a great idea that it's on the surface, on the uh, join, not on the surface. Well, that's what I'm talking about. The actual sprue nib is on the surface of that part there, as you can see, when it could easily have been on the back. All right. And also on the front face of all this, these parts here, these main parts here, on the front face of all of them, where it could easily have been on the back. All right. So that's what I'm talking about, and that's where I think Tackle have got it wrong. All right, so there we go. Um, so that's that section done. So now we can move on. We're racing through this. Um, what did you say, racing through this? This is like day three. Um, yeah, so there we go. Now we can move on and get all this together and get these supports made. And these are the axles with the, what looks like the brake mechanism on them. Right, step seven um quite a lot going on here really step six this is kind of this one kind of halts you a bit there's a lot of work in that um and then you get onto all this and th this assembling these little wheels onto these feet here as you can see there they, they, they're free to turn but these little feet don't fit that well so you know you need a bit of mr surfacer on there and then these joints here between these two halves of these parts aren't that good so you need a bit of immersed surfacer in there so it kind of halts you a bit um and here we go this is the this is the upright here with the uh with the uprights in the vertical position and you can see there's these little two pins here a20 i haven't taken those off the sprue but they'll they'll go in there and sort of lock that together i haven't taken them off the sprue because um you've got to move all around to get the rope in and everything or the cable should i say and then this one here, um, I've left all floppy for you, so you can see that's it. That's it in its folded state, um, and then that goes up like so. Those pins go in together like that, like scaffolding. And that's it, and then that's that one in the vertical as well. And then these sit somewhere up on top. So you see, it's quite a quite a tall. Um, what's that there? That's uh, what's. 20 it's over 20 centimeters so um yeah it's pretty tall and it's still not finished yet. you've got the wheels and everything to go on yet so uh so there it is that's that's that stage there um oh the axles here are the axles here we go there's those built up um quite fiddly best to build them and keep them out of the way um because the you've got the brake actuators there, 
and they just get snapped off as soon as you as soon as look at them. Um, I actually be careful when you cut these off the sprue. I actually cut one of these off and thought that the the rod there was actually part of the sprue connector, so I had to repair that one. So uh, yeah, stupid me, schoolboy error. But um, no, there we go. So that's that step done. Now if we turn over the page, we're getting near the end now. Uh, we've got to fit this all together now, like this. We've got to look at the options now. I haven't made my mind up yet whether I want this up or in the folded state. I should probably have it up. If you have to have to choose one option now with it up in the air, I'll do that. But if I have the ability to be able to collapse it, then I will just to show you show you what it's like in both um, in both guises. So I'll get this stage done now, and then hopefully come back with this later on. It's um it's Saturday today, nineteenth of January two thousand nineteen. I was hoping to get this finished today, but I don't think I'm going to. Um, there's, there's still a quite a lot of work to do. Um, this this is a very very intense build. There's there's a lot of um, uh, quite large sprue gates. You you've heard me moan enough about the sprue gates on the faces, which are just a joke. Um, and there's also a bit of sort of fine flash on the edge of all the parts, which I think needs to be scraped away and, and sanded away to give everything a bit of a sort of rounded edge, particularly on these here, these um, these brackets here. There was a there was quite a lot of flash on the edges of those. So they needed to be all sanded down and everything, otherwise you end up with this, um, you know, sort of plastic looking edge. So I'll get on with this now and I'll see you when I've done that. Here you go guys, just wanted to pop in with this a bit, bit quickly. Um, <clears throat> as I showed you just now, we're, we're building this, putting it all together um, and adding the cables. And you've got the option of having it in the down position, like this one, or in the up position, like this one and the only restriction is the cables um basically because you have no way of really winding the cables on and off these spools so um <clears throat> it's it's really uh a case of deciding what you want and then adding the cables i think because these spools do go round um as you can see there they do turn but they're quite difficult to turn. I don't know how you'd get your hand on them with a string and everything in the way and get them to wind on. So um, what it really needs is something to be able to wind it, you know, <laughs> but then it would be quite toy-like. But just to show you, I mean, you can, you take one like that, that, that one's up, this one's down. I can um, bring these together here and then bring these up, put those two together like so. And then we've got it vertical and if I want it horizontal, just take it down, move these two apart, which is what the, the pulleys would take care of that anyway. And there it is in the horizontal position, ready for towing behind your half track or truck or whatever it is. Okay, right. Um, got the wheels done and everything now. So, um, and then put the wheels and tires and everything onto the axles there. So that's all done. And then when we turn over the page, we get to uh, we make up these um, stands and everything for supporting it while it's actually in use. And then you also get the option here to, to, to use these pieces. And I think this is some sort of, I don't know if we're going on rails or something, I don't know. Uh, maybe someone could tell me, I don't know what they're for. There's no hint in the instructions whatsoever where they are, what they are. But you get all the parts for your spares box. You get some of the wheels and gears there if you don't use them. Um, so moving on here, now we come to the part where we have to decide uh, whether we're going to have it vertical or in the toe position. And although you could have this all movable and working, probably not a good idea to do that because you're going to start breaking stuff. So here we're going to add some some support beams that hold everything up. They're obviously um, when they're when when the things on its wheels they're stowed, so they give you these and you put them in their stowed positions. Um, and you also, when you uh, when you come to here, you turn the page, you can see it here. You you have to add the um, the towing, um, you know, the draw bar, and then you've got some other bars going in there, and then the these little brackets, these little brackets down here, you have to add them. Or if you're going to do it in the in the vertical position, you're going to add them there without the the bars and stuff in them, obviously. 
and there it is so that's what it looks like when it's on its wheels um, it's beautiful it's a lovely lovely model I'm really really impressed with it uh, I know I have my moan about these sprue connection points and they are you know a complete pain in the ass if we look here you can see this is one of the feet for the supports the sprue connection points are actually on this face they could have put them on that face no on that face you know come on tack them um so uh yeah really really good uh really really impressed with it um the tires aren't very nice although you can't see it now they come with these um spiders in the middle of them and you cut them out and you you kind of in fact what I'll do is I'll take one off and show you um so it may be help you decide whether you get if, if resin wheels become available you know this is um this is like the first week this kit's been available in this country but uh you know what is it today Sunday the 20th of January but you know in a year's time every resin wheels for it so here we go you got the tires there but on the back side you can see they're out of shape got these three sort of lumps in them um it's not a major thing it's not going to bother me but uh you know it may affect some people um i haven't cleaned the tires up maybe you can see how easy there they go on after it's all assembled and everything and the tire treads themselves need a bit of a cleaned up but i haven't done that yet and then obviously if you want to have it in the vertical position you can you just do all this now and then put those together like so Come on, and there you go. There's those together like that. Um, and then they go that way around, I believe. And you put the, the supports in here. Obviously, they need cleaning up yet. So I've got this box of bits here. Oops. I've got these bits and pieces here, which I've cut off the sprues. There's some support beams and some pegs that go in and everything in there. There's also these plates. Um, you can see them here. Those two plates, one either end. I've left them off just purely so I can get some paint in there when I come to paint it, and then I'll glue them on and paint it all afterwards. Um, you all know my building style. I like to make sure I get paint in everywhere, even if it can't be seen. Um, and just to give you a size comparison of this thing, which I normally do is my favourite little size comparison. There's the Cooper wagon. So uh, yeah, there you go. All very very nice. You see the Lancaster engine support in the background there. Um, so yeah, all very, very nice. Uh, lovely, lovely model. Um, now what I'll do is I'll assemble it in the uh, vertical position to show you. And then we'll call that a day and this build done. I've just noticed something here, guys, that would uh, help any future builders of this model. This is a typical tack-on instruction thing. They do this all the time. Uh, here in step six, they're telling you here to drill these four holes. There's eight holes because there's two pairs of these. Um, they're telling you to draw these 0.8 holes in the sides of it here. So you do that, which I've done, and you can see that here. Draw those holes. Yeah. Those holes are for these covers, which are optional. So I've decided not to use the covers here because it will make getting the, the cables much easier to get onto the spools. So I've decided not to use those covers. And just to let you know, the covers holes are smaller than this part B24. So you can't get the, the cover on afterwards anyway, and, and, and of course you've got the bridge across. So the cover can't be fitted afterwards. So I've now got four holes that shouldn't be there, I'll need to fill in. Um, so, or, or just, I might just leave them. But uh, yeah, so there you go guys, just, just to note, if you're not going to fit those covers, like I haven't on these gears here, then, on well, those gears there, then don't draw those holes. There she is guys, all done. Stood up on her uh, wheels. And you can see how big I've got the Kuba wagon here. I've got a 35th scale World War One figure there. Um, and it is overall, it is 150, but 170 mil high. So you can see that there's a normal six inch rule. It's about 170 millimeters high, and it's it's a good 200 odd millimeters long. Now. You're probably wondering why it's not stood on its jack stands here and here. Uh, I made a mistake. Um, I'm going to show you something here to help you not make that mistake. 
These are the jack stands here. So you've got the two halves, the main upright, and then you've got this pin A15, which goes in the bottom, which goes into the, the base here, A6. Now, if you look on the instructions down here, you can see what they're saying is either up or down. Okay, so you think, well, I'll just glue that pin in up because this is obviously the loaded position. Because obviously when it's hanging in transport, it's going to hang down. And then when it's um, standing on its feet, it'll be up in there. No, if it's up in there, when they're down at their lowest point, the tires are still on the ground. They don't actually touch the ground with um with them up in there so if you've got that pad down and be careful not to hit the, the camera stand if you've got this pad like this when you fit them into here your extension will be as far as it will go and you will still have uh the pad not touching the ground so what i've had to do is cut all mine apart you can see them here and i've inserted some tube into them um i'm gonna have to fabricate something so that they actually sit on those on those feet so that's uh, something else to look out for. The instructions, I don't know, it's always the same with Tacom. They um, they have all these options, but never tell you what they're for. It's like if you if you build a, a, a Tamiya Spitfire, it will have, at the start, it will have different exhausts on the engines. And it will say, you know, these exhausts for version A, C and E, and these exhausts for B, D and F. Um, Tacom just do things like this. They just have either have those or either have those. They don't even tell you what these are for. It doesn't show you them in use anywhere. It doesn't even show them assembled. Um, I mean, this is for if you have it without any wheels on it. So I'm assuming it's for rails or something. I don't know, but you know, they, they should really tell you or at least show you something. Um, so that's it pretty much done. Um, other than these, we've got these beams which go in here now that go crisscross to protect the uh to protect the um sorry to keep it i just knocked something on my floor my dog was gonna grab it um right so yeah the, these beams go in to protect the uh, to protect the keep the the thing vertical you can see one fitted in here so i haven't fitted them obviously because i want to break it all down for painting um and then we've also got the we've got the the a-frame there for towing which I'm not going to fit if I'm having it in this position. And you can see here that the way it goes in is these pieces go up underneath. So, and this is how, this is how you have it in the upright position. So if you have those pieces in there now, then you can't actually fit that A-frame unless you do some work with pins and stuff. So I think the thing to do is have the A-frame sat on the side if you're going to put it in the diorama. Um, and then these obviously aren't fitted if you use it in this position. So, and there we go. You can see how I showed you earlier with the uh, with it sat on its on its trolleys there, and then you got it here with it vertical. Okay, and that is pretty much that. And then you've also got this frame here that you get with it for putting onto the Panther turret, so you can actually lift lift the Panther turret as it's showing you there. Um, I guess you could also build this up and put lead in it to make those those cables pull down vertically. And just to finish up, here it is now. I've put together the um, the towing A-frame. So you've got an air tank half on there and a piece of plastic goes in there. Um, so that would actually fit on the front there and pull it along. Um, I'm actually wondering, I need to look at some reference. Would they have left that on when they actually um, you know, put this thing up, erected this thing that may have been left hanging on the side or indeed left vertical or something. I don't know. So I need to look at that. Um, but as I said, you, you can't sort of fit it and then take it off because it's encapsulated unless you took off these pins here and drilled something and made your own brass pins. And then you could actually do that. I might do that. I don't know. Um, and I also didn't show you the the frame which you put together for lifting the um the panther turret so I've, I've got that on there now it's not quite enough weight to um to keep everything taut and i'll show you what i mean um if i wanted to keep the ropes taut then if i put a put some extra weight on there well it's going to fall over i think but yeah up to there we go um but yeah to keep the ropes taut 
then you need you know you need a decent amount of weight to keep them hanging rather than just you know being all loose and looking like a piece of string but as i mentioned earlier that in the ink uh, i think it looks really effective it does look actually like steel cable so um yeah i'm quite impressed with that but it's really easy to put up um there's one side there's the other side. Obviously, after it's all painted and everything, you would glue it or stick it down to a diorama base or whatever. But there we go. There it is, guys. So, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this build. Um, it's been, like I said, it's been a few days. And uh, I've really enjoyed it. It's a fantastic kit. If you like what you've seen here, oh, I've just noticed there's some other pieces I haven't put on. There's these little uh, little parts here to go on either end. These little A23 parts. I wonder why there were so many of them. There it is there. It's those tiny little bits there that have to go on. So there we are. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this. If you've liked this, please like, subscribe. Hit the notifications bell. Um, thank you to all my subscribers. I'm over 880 now. Um, so basically here we are now, January the 20th. And you guys have practically doubled my subscriber count this year well done and thank you very very much and please tell your friends because once we get to that magic thousand then i think i start getting paid don't i which would be good help me uh buy some new equipment i could do some better lighting to be honest anyway thanks for watching and i'll see you all again bye bye